Hello guys, I'm Sean the Bro, and we are back again for another episode of the Game Maker series. Now, I love Game Maker, absolutely, and I love all the programming languages. I've done, I've mastered, I don't want to say mastered, like, com fully professional. Mastered meaning I can make pretty much anything I want to happen, happen. Like, I know the basic idea of how to do that. And I've answered a lot of programming questions over the years of my YouTubing career, but I had one from, I think his name was just Two Camp Sam, that I got a few days ago, and it was how to make an items box for Super Smash Bros. games that comes in and drop items. So I made a new program. I'm not going to do it on that one, because I'm just going to show you now. So I won't um, make it that de decorative, but I'll show you how to do it, and then you can edit it later. So actually, you should do it like this. Let's put our items box. And you'll make a new sprite. It doesn't really matter how big it is. I think that would be even a little too big for the square itself. But we could just do this. Um, about that color. And we will fill it in with... A slightly darker shade of yellow. Yeah, that's fine. Let's draw a question mark real quick. So it looks like the... You like the sound effects? Um, no, I'm pretty good at making sprites, to be honest. I've made whole sprite sheets, but I'm going to do this real quick. So, my apologies. Perfect! It's exactly what a question mark should look like. There, oh, there we go. Kidding. But, um, <laughs> yeah, this is just a real quick. Pretend that that's a, that's a question. There we go. Now we got some high quality stuff going on. Oh, actually, black around the outside always looks better. So anyway, you'll have your object here, or your sprite, and we're gonna create an object, which you can do up here, as well, and then object, item box. Okay, and you would use your sprite. Now, it's actually not that hard to do this. Um, with code itself, you can do it. I actually find, I know that the drag and drop is a lot easier, which isn't really a bad thing. I know it's a lot easier, but here we go. So, instead of me rambling on and on, you start with your object. Basically, what you're gonna wanna do is, you can do this several ways. If you wanna do code, I can show you code, but um, a simple beginner's way to learn how to do this would be like this. So you can either do, well, we could do that, but I think we should do, we could do a step. Hmm. Hmm. We'll probably do it on a timer, I would have to say. All right, so you're gonna wanna get your alarm and um, no, you can make multiple of these so that if you want it to be, come in at random times, it can do that, but you can do it with timers to set it, well, alarms, sorry. You can do it with alarms to do it, to set it up so that it comes in every 30 seconds or whatever. So this is what you're going to do. So once your alarm happens, this object, now you should actually have this in a created variable, not the items box itself. So let's do that real quick. I'll do it right. Let's make this completely right. So, control. Now you're gonna want to put a control object in pretty much every one of your rooms for the games you make. So you're gonna you're gonna want to create an alarm. Once this alarm goes off, you're gonna create a moving object, which would be your item box from this position. Um, you're not really gonna want X and Y, but you're gonna want the X and the Y of the control if that's where you put it, or you can get, go get the coordinates from the room itself, which would be. Let me pull this up for you. If you look here, you can see them in the bottom corner. They're a little bit cut off from the Vandercam window, but you can see them down here. So you're going to go here. Um, I believe you can double click on that, but whatever. So do this. Direction. Um, I've actually used Game Maker for about five years now, and I still get this wrong every time, but I believe that 
270 is right. <laughs> I'm not, I'm still not sure. I'm actually going to test this right now because I, I get that wrong 95% of the time. I mean, I don't think I've gotten it wrong recently, but I feel like I do get it wrong all the time, but we're going to see. Um, oh, duh. Yeah, okay. So we're good then, I believe. Let me see. I didn't put it in here, so I'm an idiot, and I apologize for that. Yep, yeah. let's put your control right about there. I don't really like ha leaving this unnamed, even though it's just a tutorial. So we're gonna rename this to, we can just call it room one. We don't even have to be um, special about it, just. All right, so we're gonna run this. Um, yeah, okay, I'm a major, idiot I'm sorry do not listen to me <laughs> no I, okay I really do know what I'm doing I just kept I, I wanted to test it to make sure but we'll test it later so I apologize for that I'm gonna keep going though because that's good stuff to know that I am a fool okay so alarm zero create moving instance now this is what you can do this is how I create my bosses in video games believe it or not I use code I definitely use code for image scale image scale would be the most um, I know how to code a lot in Game Maker. I personally like the drag and drop more simply because it is easier and it is more beginner, but I know how to get everything to work basically the same way with it, and I still use code when I need to. But you can create moving from the X of the control. If you say X, it's the X of the object, and the Y of the object. So it'll create this way, right, I believe, and at a speed of four. And if you wanted it to like dip down, imagine this was your item box, you could go across, dip down, drop it, and come back. It, you could do that. You could do that with a path. Or you could do that simply by when it hits, you could have an object in the screen, which is what I did for my Super Smash Brothers game with my Kratos character for a certain reason. There is, you could put a divider in the center. Um, you can either get the coordinates itself from down here. Or you could actually create an object and put it there, and then once it comes in co comes in Y contact with that object, then it goes down. And once it comes back up, it goes back up, and it won't cut if you do it properly. But if you just want a simple beginner's guide, then you can do this. Simply this. This will bring you across. Um, now we're gonna need to have when the time when the alarm I'm sorry when the alarm goes off. So once this cre is created, we're going to have an alarm. Which it's been a while. I'm sorry. Here we go. So number of steps. Now I don't know how much you would want for a good time because. It depends if you're changing the settings in your Super Smash Bros. game so that they can choose the item frequency. You'll want to change this to whatever that setting is. And basically, what I would say is we're for the test, we'll do five. You'll probably want about 30. I think that would be about fair. Um, each one of these steps is. One hundredth of a second. Each one of these steps is two seconds. No, it's way shorter than that. So you get thirty. Each one of these steps is half a second, tenth of a second. No, half a second. Um. Well, again, it's been a while. I apologize. But for this, we'll use this. So anyway, alarm zero. Here we go. Create moving instance. Once this alarm goes off here in the actions once this alarm goes off alarm zero will do this action so we're gonna run good 270s down say I knew I would get it wrong absolutely knew it 180 no it's gonna be 360 I believe it's 360 if I get this wrong you can punch me I do apologize. Okay, good. We got that right. 
So this is what it would do. Basically, you would have a better sprite, a sprite that you actually took time to make, or an actual items box with wings, and you would have the animation for the wings flapping. So it would look a lot better, and your speed, it would go, it would bob up and down, which you can do it one of two ways. You can do it with paths and moving. That stuff I always did with the sprite itself, because you can have a little option here to modify the mask. You can modify the mask of each um, frame of the sprite. So you can do that, and you can still apply by all, you can still, um, play by all the rules sorry not apply you can still play by all the rules of walls and boundaries and everything and that way you don't have to tell it you don't have to mess with it say go this way go this way you can slowly bring it up and down in the animations of the wings and it'll only take about eight i would say eight frames what is it called in this yeah there we go yep so you can modify each collision mask and that is your so your sub images would be like that. Um, sorry, sorry if that was confusing. But my point is, that, that's the basic. That's the most basic you can get. Now, for it to drop an item, you'd have to have another item. So let's create a new item real quick. SPR item. So I don't know what you'd want for the item. Um, we'll make it the same size because it's just. So you'll want like. The Pokeball or something. Um. Oh crap! There we go. So now you got a Pokeball. Now the Pokeball can be dropped from him in this simple, with this simple thing. So objects. Um, we'll just call it item, not Pokeball, since this is sprite item. Okay, now, once the object item box is created, you're going to want to add another alarm if you're doing it with the alarms. If you're doing it randomly, I can show you that way as well. But for the beginners, the most simple way is with alarms because you can time it. And if all your maps are the same, or if you want it to drop at a certain place, you can just time it. If not, you can do multiple alarms and time it the same way if you want to do it random you can do create random which i believe is right here and you can do it at a certain spot so it's not that much harder but there's a lot of things i did that with my bosses as well and you have to get into some code to make it fluent and everything and that's fine it looks great but again for a beginner shut up no one wants to hear you okay so for a beginner this is what i would do so you create an alarm once um once he is created, you don't need an alarm. So we're, we'll do the uh, action alarm first. So we'll do like 30 steps Hello. in alarm zero. Okay, shut that up. There we go. In alarm zero, we'll do 30 steps. Now, once these 30 steps are up, we're going to create. We actually don't have to create moving if you apply gravity to the object. I can do a video in gravity I would be more than happy to but gravity is not as simple as you would think it's not hard to do but your first time doing it it's a lot more difficult than just like one thing to do so I'm not going to explain that right now you can look that up if you want or if you want me to do one I can do one knock it out real quick for you I can do it with code and drag and drop so okay create moving here you go you can create it at X sorry not S and at Y at a speed of about two, because it'll probably want to fall slow. Direction 270, because we figured out that that was down. My apologies. Um, I want to. You don't want that in create. You want that in the alarm. So now that will be done. The only other thing that you should have before this is already working is something to stop it. So SPR wall will make new. We'll give it an outline of this and say like a gravelly color, which will make your things much better, obviously. But there you go. Doesn't that look like what a wall looks like? Yes, it does. 
and then you don't need anything else for simply this but you can do object wall make it a solid just because and then when I'm sorry when the object item comes in contact which is collision with wall then moving direction stop so if I can get this in here and do this and then we can put walls all along the bottom here um, if you hold shift you can go across without doing single blocks now if you run this it should give you what you want for the most basic of a program that pokeball will drop that thing exits the screen that will stop and there you go that is how to make falling objects in game maker for super smash bros games or really any kind of falling object i hope this helped you it's a simple guide and I am I love these videos you guys seem to too so if you have any suggestions please ask I will more than gladly help I can do code I like to keep it on the simpler side because I'm sure that people love drag and drop for beginning to learn that's how I learned how to do the code for game maker um, and the drag and drop for game maker I learned from watching people do drag and drop and then I was like oh yeah that's drag and drop and I said oh look I can do some code with it too so anyway that is how you would make a game like that that's how you would make that action happen. I hope I helped you. If I did, please rate, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye, my friends. Good. Hi. Hello. Hey, what's up? Uh, Hi, hey, Michael Lindsay, Hi. some kind of order. Uh, you're watching Sean the Bro. You know, you know it's legit because he has a shirt and he has a phone case. You can't show yeah. the phone case because he's recording with me. I don't it. have a phone case. Buddy, no. I got a, you should I got get a one, though. In fact, it's Sean is my bro. It doesn't say Sean the Bro, though. It's just no, black. It Loser. Check out Sean the Bro. Yeah. Oh, you're a bitch. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you're a bitch. Thank you guys so much.